What a lovely homecoming. Yeah, it was good. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the you got him good with the clubbing hand after you just took a big shot mm -hmm. from him. Um, you feel you had to get the punch back, or was it just you saw an opening? Um, I knew that he would uh, close the distance. You know, uh, Clay's got a very particular style. He, he uses two different, but uh, everybody knows him for that pressure, that movement. You know, um, just outpacing guys. Um, and then he's got that little bit where he kind of sits back and, and uh, like he was doing today and, and throws some of those bigger shots. And um, I knew that once he landed that and, and wobbled me that he would come in. So I tried to meet him with the shot as he came in um, and was able to connect. And um, he does leave his neck open a little bit when he, when he shoots. Um, so once I hit him, uh, it was right there and, and wrapped it up. And thoughts on Herb's stoppage? Uh, did you feel it? Was it what, did he tap? It didn't. Certainly didn't look it from our. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't quite tell. I knew that he was hurt from the punch, um, and I felt his hand move a little bit, but it didn't. It didn't really feel like a tap to me. So, you know, I, I knew the choke was on, and if the if the guillotine team wasn't there, my left leg was over top of his shoulder, so I was going to get the triangle. Um, so I was just kind of anticipating his head popping out, and if it did, then I was going to transition. But. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought it was a, a good stop, which I'm hurt for. So, we spoke on Wednesday, and you were telling me how you didn't enjoy the, uh, the wars, although you get into them all the time. Um, safe to say it's a perfect night for you? Um, almost, you know, except for that except big for right hand, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, there's always one. There's, a, there's always one. Um, you know, I, I, I was prepared for a 15-minute battle, you know, um, uh, coming into this in great shape, um, and... You know, I've been in plenty of them, but, uh, you know, I, I fight to do that. I, I train to do that. I sacrifice time away from my family so that I can do that, so that I can get a call in six weeks and fight again. Um, you know, because those long, drawn-out 15-minute wars, they take a little bit of uh, time to recover from, and, uh, you know, they, they take some fights off your career, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, to, to go in there and, and uh, do what I know I can do, uh, it felt great. Clay Guida, Hall of Famer, tough guy to submit. You were able to, you know, get the submission. Where would you rank this finish in this moment in your career? Um, this is this is pretty high, you know. Um, it's, uh, you know, the the one over Camos is still it's still pretty high, and I think this one's right there, and it, it might overtake it, being that it's, you know, in Jersey. I've had a pretty crummy streak in Jersey. Um, you know, and, and, and nothing to do with the fans or anything like that. Just, you know, opponents and, and stupid things happen to me as well. And, and uh, that's just the way that it goes. But uh, it was good to kind of get back on track and, and uh, get another first round finish as well. And, you know, you mentioned how you're just taking fight by fight and, and you know, kind of you don't have like long term goals. But does a performance like this kind of change your mind and, and, and Say, hey, maybe I do have you know a long time left in, in this sport. Um, I, I think I do, you know. And, and when I say fight by fight, I don't I don't mean that uh, you know I'm like right there. Um, I'm just I'm 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 trying to prepare myself as a uh, you know a provider for my family for that next step, um, and that's kind of the, one of the biggest things. But uh, you know, if I can feel healthy and and perform like that, um, you know, my last three wins have come in the first round. Uh, you know, in, in just over two minutes. Um, so I know what I can do, you know. It's just a matter of doing it on fight night. What's next for you? Any any event you have in mind that you'd like to return at or any opponent you'd like to face? Um, no opponent in particular, you know. I, I've never been the type to, to pick opponents, and I know that uh, that's like, oh, well, you know, you need to guide your career and all that stuff. And, and, and you guys in, in the media, you do like to give fighters crap for not picking uh picking opponents but uh you know that's not that's not my thing um i'd i'd like to be working my way back up to the top of this division and and um you know I, i'd like to fight guys like i was really excited to fight clay i mean this is this is a guy that's that i've got a ton of respect for um and uh it was it was fun preparing for it it was fun having him in my mind and you know envisioning his face on the pads as i'm hitting him um but uh yeah you know it, We'll see, and, and, and if, if Sean needs me to fill in soon, I'll fill in soon. The only thing is he, he can't get me during elk season. <laughs> and, you know, last time for me, um, this is your first win at home, right? No. No? No, uh, but it's been a while. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's so been you, a little bit. You broke the New Jersey curse. Uh, yeah, there was. Uh, I'm not. Su- I'm not superstitious, but there was a little bit of a curse, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Does that feel a little bit extra special? You know? Uh, like yeah, it, it it's good. It's good to get the win, you know, here and in, in front of my fans and. And it's uh, Dalt, Cerrone, Damian Maya, George St. Pierre, Michael Bisping, and now you, the only fighters in UFC history with 20 wins. What does that mean to you? That's a hell of a group to be compared to, you know. Um, I, I'm not the type to obsess about some of these little records and stuff like that that I've got, but uh, that's, a, that's a really cool one. You know, the weight of it, uh, just hearing their names uh, is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, to be associated with that group of guys. Jim, Mickey Gall had talked about training with you and looking up to you. Were you able to watch his fight tonight? And if he did, what did you think of his performance? Um, it was, I, I missed the first round because we were just coming coming down and stuff like that, but I was able to get it you know, on my phone. And um, You know, he went and he fought a tough fight against a tough opponent and uh, was able to keep attacking throughout the fight and win a tough decision. Um, you know, he, he did great. I mean, that kid's... He got he got thrown to the wolves, you know. Like your second fight, you're walking out into that, is is pretty ridiculous to think about, um, you know. But at the same time, that's a kid that, as a teenager, was coming to sparring days with us, and I mean, mixing it up. And that was when we had a group of you know six or seven guys fighting in the UFC, and um, he's right in the mix, and and uh, you know, and training with everybody, so. He's he's got the experience when it comes to the training aspect. It's it's those little things. It's hearing the roar of the crowd that you still, I mean, I was in the back getting goosebumps and you know like just you're you, it, it's it's hard not to let your uh, emotions and and your adrenaline just take over sometimes and and uh, it's kind of a learned skill to to keep it down um, and to kind of push those back. So um, yeah, for him to just for him to be here and competing is is awesome. It's amazing. How good of a, how good of a feeling is it to Put together your what three and one now in your last four i think after that four fight slump how good of a feeling is that to kind of prove doubters wrong and it, it's great it's you know i mean um I, i've never really concerned myself with the doubters you know it's it's but it's for me it's going out and 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 proving to myself really you know and uh yeah it's a it's it's a great feeling to go out and and perform the way that i know i can i know you said you're not one to call out names but you seem to have a lot of fun with Guida, who's another legend. Is that something that would interest you? Another guy of, of that stature moving forward? Uh, it would. It would definitely uh, interest me. You know, like uh, hearing the names that I've that, that I recognize, that I uh, have seen fight and have been fans of. Um, it, it's awesome. You know, it's awesome to to you know be with them in the build up and 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 uh, you know step into the octagon with them. Um, you know, what I need to do is I need to start going up to 70s and 85 so I can find some more of those guys that, that, I, that I've always wanted to fight, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter to me who is across the cage when they close the door behind me. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, fun to, it's fun to have uh, that potential for that really exciting fight. And, like, you know that it's, it's a lot higher uh, probability with a guy like Clay. Did you guys say anything to each other after the fight? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, Clay's awesome. He's he's awesome. He actually gave me his, uh, one of his shirts. You know, he's starting up that uh, that fishing thing with uh, Chad Mendez, and, and and gave me one of the first run of his shirts. So, um, yeah, you know, he's a he's a like I said, he's a guy that I got a ton of respect for. Um, he's been in. He's fought a who's who. Um, I mean, how can you not like the guy? You know, they're calling you the Benjamin Button of uh, <laughs> MMA. How do you, uh, how do you feel about the clock? You look uh, 29 up there. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the line was he's turning like a, you know, like a <laughs> symbiont or something like that, right? Like a venom. Uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely coming with its, its bad sides of it. But um, you grow your hair out a little bit and everybody freaks out, you know? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, was, it was a struggle for a couple of years there. You know, it really was. And, uh, it wasn't easy, and without the support of my my wife and my family and my team, uh, I, I wouldn't have gotten through it. And, and um, you know, even after my diagnosis and, and coming back in 2016 and having a great uh, you know tail end of the year, half you know second half of that year, um, I still came back and got my ass kicked by the line. <laughs> you know, at the end of the year and and uh, into 2017, and dealt with some some bogus stuff that. Uh, you know, nobody wants to deal with, and 
you know, it, it was just, uh, it was tough, you know. And then, that's going to be a lifelong struggle for you? It very well may be. You know, uh, I've, the problem with it, the disease is that we don't really know too much about it, and it affects everybody differently. And, you know, um, I was in rough shape, but I've met people that it's, I mean, completely, completely changed their lives, and, and um, it's, it's ridiculous that, you know, there's, there's not as much research on it and, and, uh, and development of either tests or vaccines or, you know, a cure for it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, I, th I think one of the biggest things is the fact that, one, I'm comfortable with being uncomfortable, and you, you just have to, you have to fight back. You have to. And, you know, there were plenty of days where I did not feel like getting out of bed, but it's like, hey, I'm fighting in four weeks. <laughs> you know, you got to get up and do something, Jim. And, uh, you know, I, I struggled through camps and trained in a way that wasn't to my strengths just to get through it. Um, but, but, you know, putting up with that little bit of a grind and, and continually trying to, you know, be healthy, not only to combat the disease, but to be a better athlete and just doing a little bit of exercise as well. And, you know, like when it comes to the medication and all the supplements and stuff I was taking, I don't know how much of that helped. You know, I, I think some of them, obviously the doxycycline helped, but, uh, you know, I did some mushroom therapy. Maybe that helped. I, I you know, changed my diet to anti-inflammatory diet for the most part. And, you know, I still have a beer here and there. But, uh, you know, I like, <laughs> tried to try to cut down on, on dairy and gluten and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, just, just fighting it every day, I think, is kind of what helped me get to where I am. And, and it might it might come back. And, and that's, that's one of the things why I say, you know, I'm, I'm taking it fight by fight. Because if it, if it does, it might be hard to to stay the course and, and to c continue through it because um, I I know what it can lead to and, and you know it's uh it's been a long road but I'm, I'm not I'm not at the destination yet you know I still got plenty of plenty of road to travel. Jim are you happy to be able to be you know, in New Jersey to celebrate tonight Mickey was in here earlier he kind of uh, invited everybody to come party. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah you know it's uh it's it's the, one of the cool things is that usually in in Jersey uh, and on the east coast you fight later on the card and it's you know, we're standing here here at one o'clock in the morning. You know, and now we get to now we get to go hang out a little bit and actually, uh, you know, eat something. So um, it's fun to to be able to you know then go and have an after party, something like that, and and, uh, and do it with the fans and, and you know my my Jersey fans, you know my my people. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you.